Cousins, still going is Markel Cousins. It's excellent. Markel Cousins cuts inside. And he's... What a goal! What a goal! That was Maradona. Maradona scoring. No Markel Cousins. Maradona. Markel Cousins. Maradona. No, that doesn't work. Come on! Hello. We are back. Coffee with Guillem is back. Which means that we have to start where we always start. Creo que será un cappuccino con leche sin lactosa. Listo. So, with the coffee, it means that my brain will switch on and I'll start thinking of what to tell you. I think this first coffee with Guillaume for this season is going to be about what I'm doing on holidays. Although I've got the impression that uh, holidays are going to be interrupted, mostly because of Rubiales. Uh, and probably I'll have to do some, uh, some media before the weekend, and at the weekend I'll be in La Liga TV. That will, be, uh, that will be my week and I'll show you some of it. That's what Coffee with Guillem will be about, as always. Uh, I'll give you my opinion on the big issues. Uh, I'll tell you stories that I may have discovered along my travels on, um, on the week. I'll travel with you or you'll travel with me. Uh, I'll remind you of things that are important to me and uh, hopefully it will be for some of you as well, like I'm doing an event uh, in Nottingham, mostly Nottingham Forest related. Uh, I'll have guests. Uh, I'm talking to the club about who to, who to bring. I'm going to have some memorabilia as well. And the plan is, as it was in Croft uh, recently, the plan is, of course, to raise money for Beagles Bay United. I'm going to do uh, three or four events uh, during the season uh, in which I hope to meet you. And uh, it will be an opportunity for a question and answer session, but also to tell you my story and the people I've met and a bit of Messi and Ronaldo and Pep Guardiola and Pochettino and all that, my books. Etc. So that's what Coffee with Guillaume will be as it has always been. I'm gonna have my coffee, then I'm just gonna start relaxing first for as long as they let me. Let me take you inside the house. This is the car that I rented. Simple house, as you can see. Nothing special, nice. Let's go inside. You can already see the sea, can you? All very Spanish style, old and lovely. And this is what you see. Look at that. Amazing. I'm having the last few days of holidays in Mallorca. You know, all your food is on holiday, as you can see here. I'm about to go on CVS. I could put this better, but I just don't know how to at the moment. I'm going to be talking about a documentary, docu series that CBS has done on Shaka Donetsk. The show must go on. It's on Paramount Plus. Check it out. Okay, got to go in now. The kickoff of the UEFA Champions League, and this season features the most inspirational story in world football. We want to show people that we are still alive. We are made from steel. We will fight. The same as Ukraine on the battlefield. You can try to kill us. You can bomb us every day. You can threat us with a nuclear weapon. But come on, we are still playing football. I did my little gig in CBS talking about the show must go on, about Chaka Donetsk. And now it's time to watch Beagles Real United. That's what we're doing now. And we are actually losing. It's getting close to half time. I'm going to put Ryan's commentary. Now it's the 15th, it's put by Han Leslie. And now it's, come on. Uh, it's too up here if we can get this right, United. It's in. Wide. Play wide. Now to Gaz. It's intercepted, but he's still got it now, Gaz. Oh, and he's no. lost the ball now, as Gaz. It's at home, it's against Ashley Town, it's a derby, and we started the season very well, but um, if we lose, it'd be one point out of nine. Um, 
too early not to get it right. But at the same time, I think our coaches, Jordan and Gaz, know what's wrong. And that is the half-time whistle. And it's been a real struggle here. And we are back on the way here at the Verdon Stadium. Football gives you always a second chance. Uh, we've got a free kick, edge of the box. Marco there, Corey there, Gaz there. Who's going to be over this? It's Marcel Cousins, Corey Wilson, and Gaz Hunt over yeah. the free kick. Who's taking it? Marco? All three Marco? of them are still there. Yeah. Corey, the Corey. Lines Corey. Corey Come on! Come on! 1 1! Come on! Come on. 1 1. We are playing better. We're keeping the ball better. The uh, Asli are not having many chances. So this is a more equal, balanced game, which is good. We can build from keeping the ball, from playing it the way the way we do things. Zeus out wide here for United in the blistering rain here in Biggerweight. Now Gareth Hunt. 20 to go. Please. Corey. 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 Come on, Corey. Goal! Goal! Come on! 2 1. Come on, Beagle's way. Come on! It's the guys who wins the ball back. Markel Cousins. Still Kel. Still going is Markel Cousins. Still going is Markel Cousins. This is excellent. Markel Cousins cuts inside. And he's what a goal! What a goal! Maradona, Maradona scoring. No Markel Cousins, Maradona. Markel Cousins, Maradona. No, that doesn't work. Come on, 3-1, 3-1. Markel. Oh my God. I mean, nobody would have said this was a 3-1. Oh, hold on, Jesus. Jesus, come on. Finish it. Makai Angle. Goal! 4-1. Come on. 4-1. Over. Game over. Game over. Corey. 2v1. Jesus. Come on, finish. 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 Let's give it to Corey. Corey. Hat trick for Corey Wilson. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. 5 1. Jesus on his own. Again, 1v1, 1v1. Oh my god, he's left the defender behind. He's finishing. He scored six goals in the second half. We know nothing about football. <laughs> Guess what? We're still top of the Spartan South Midlands. Luis Rubiales has resigned. It took three weeks since the World Cup. What is next for the Federation? The Federation have to choose, obviously, a president. They've got a temporary one put in place by Rubiales, but who has been saying the right things, as in, we're going to change matters, we're going to change uh, structural problems that there are in the Federation, but we're not seeing much change. So quite clearly what's going to happen next is that the election is going to be called up. There are two options for that. I won't get into it because it'll be boring. But by September next year, there will be another president. And that will be also the opportunity for anybody who doesn't belong to the regime, like Pedro Rocha, the temporary president, is to say, all right, we really, really going to make structural changes. What's important as well is that the government want to change the law of sport to be able to control the Federation, which is a private institution, but with public money and obviously public interest. And as you can see, alone their own, as, uh, as Rubiales has taken advantage of that. Wow, well, Guillaume, there, there's a lot there. And actually, I have a few questions just to follow up on that. You said that the, the government wants to take control. Would that be a good thing? Or is it nice having it be a, a separate entity? It's a very good debate. But when you actually have somebody like Luis Rubiales in charge, who basically pays those that vote him. This is a short uh, way of telling that he controls absolutely everything and he does it in very clever ways. Uh, when you have that and nobody can actually get rid of him despite uh, you know, quite a, a long list of misbehavior, of suggestion of corruption. Well, the government says this is not good. Uh, 
uh, this is no good for Spain as a, as a as a brand. It is no good for football either. So a way of improving that is, of course, controlling it. But you're right. Uh, the federation will have to have some kind of independence, and there will be a debate around that. But the thing that annoyed the government was basically that they could not get rid of somebody that stared it, the, uh, the name of Spain. And in the evening, when your holidays are finishing, you have got the possibility, or should do, actually find something that makes you happy. Like this. Sweets in Sacoma, Mallorca. I need something to uh, go through the day. <laughs> I just bought 20 euros of the stuff. I was in the pool and I was uh, rudely interrupted, no joking, by uh, Piers Morgan's team um, at uh, Piers Morgan and Censor to talk TV. And as a consequence, we've got a crew, I'll show you in a minute, and we're going to be talking about Rubiales after the uh, interview that he had with, uh, with Piers. Let me show you the setup. Hola, the light, and we're here at the hotel. So that's my camera. Let's bring in a game below you. Now, you are the token man on this panel game, so uh, a lot rests on your next few words. Uh, I've read your tweets on this. I know you've been quite scathing about Rubiales. You think it's right that he stepped down. Uh, what do you feel about the wider context of this as it now heads towards... A courtroom. Do you think we've lost a sense of proportion, or do you think that actually he should be held accountable criminally, potentially, for what happened? In fact, you lose a sense of proportion when all you talk about is the case and Rubiales. This is part of a wider context. Uh, my question to Rubiales would be, how can you think that what you've done was right and that you needed a whole wave of social protest for you to actually change your mind? And I must say, the apologies that he did to you were much more sincere than the ones that he did the day after. And for me, if Me Too was about pointing out criminal uh, behaviour of men towards women, in, in this case, the se acabo, the enough is enough uh, hashtag that Alex Yaputeyas put in first, it's about let's stop things that have been normalised, like a boss, and Piers, you said the context is not important in a court case, in this court case, it's very important, because he's a boss doing it to an employee. Oh, no, 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 sorry, just to clarify that. That you. is so important. Yeah, to clarify that, I think that's absolutely important. The power imbalance, I think, is important. In which world does he live in where he thinks that this is fine? I'll tell you the world he lives in. A world in which the Assembly, the General Assembly of the Federation, with 43 members, only seven are women. A world in which, and these are decision makers in the Federation, a world in which the heads of the local federations of Spain that also choose the next president, they're all men. That's the world he lives in. And these are people that he's chosen, that he pays directly or indirectly for them to say yes to him. That's the world that he lives in. Mm. And I think he's in shock that the majority of Spanish people almost unanimously are saying, enough, that's definitely not on. I, think he, I, I do think he was in shock. I think he was in shock in the immediate aftermath, hence his kind of attack on his critics. Then the penny began to drop that he'd done something which most people found completely unacceptable. So that was a sample of a week that was going to be on holidays, but it became a little bit busy. Uh, Coffee with Guillem is back. And not always in the lovely surroundings. Look. Natural reserve over there, beach over here. But in any case, it will always be full of information about what's going on, my opinion on the big issues, and stories of and adventures of my week, all that. That's the plan. But uh, for now, let me just have a little bit of a rest before it all kicks off. I'll be in La Liga TV at the weekend. That will be the start of my season. But before that, a bit of a